Uh, all right, guys, so tonight is Monday, January 28th, and we have Trinity Hansen, who is a senior director on Team Mill Republic, and she's going to talk to us about recruiting. Holla. <laughs> she's got five points. So, Trinity, take it away. Thank Hi you. Hi, guys. Thanks for asking me to be on. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, I joined 10 days before Christmas in 2017. And I've only done one other direct sell. I was having moderate success with that company. Definitely wasn't looking for Color Street, um, but God had bigger plans. My husband had been laid off for eight months at that point. And um, a friend of mine sent me a sample and I'm not even a nail person, but the minute I put that nail on, I knew, wow, this is incredible. And what an opportunity this was. So I saw the business opportunity before anything. Joined the very next day, and it's just been a whirlwind. Um, left the other direct sale, and it's been full force with Color Street ever since. Uh, we have, as of today, 246 girls. And um, recruiting is our mindset. Um, when you come onto our team, that's kind of like, that's instilled in you the first day. And so I kind of think my first point is your team culture. So whether you have one person or you have 250 people, you have to develop um, a mindset or a culture for your team. And they will believe in that. And if they believe in that, they're going to run with it. So our culture, I decided very early on, was going to be servant leadership. And I knew if I take care of them, what happens in the end is they end up taking care of me. So servant leadership is huge. Positivity, we, we allow no negativity on our page. Um, if someone has an issue with a nail or customer service or the way something was handled, we make them message us privately. We keep all negativity off the page. Uh, it's a drama-free zone. We also don't engage in any drama. Um, and we have a system of sharing. So our motto is we move up together. And I think that that has just created this sense of urgency to uh, get people to team leader as soon as possible so they can start duplicating that system that we have in place. And uh, we just run with that. We move together. Uh, we will help whoever wants this. You're going to get there. Uh, I don't care if you're five people below me. If I'm able to help you, I'm going to. So I just think having that mindset of um, we run together is important. So if you don't have a mantra or you don't have a culture, Think about that tonight. Think about what could you set for your team um, that you could all believe in. Because when people believe in something, they work better. Uh, so be thinking about something you can do like that for your team if you haven't already. Another thing that's kind of different about our team, we have incentives that we reward at different levels. So if you BQ in your first 35 days, you get a, a bonus, what do we call it? Bonus. Uh, qualified incentive binder let's say that a couple of times basically it's just an Avery binder but we buy the um the clear folders or whatever that you can put the nail sets in we put a couple of little goodies in there we make it look really nice and so everyone instantly as soon as they join they want to get that binder the next prize is when you get to senior stylist we have this quatrefoil pendant these are like only seven or eight dollars but we say that the pendant represents four corners of our team, which is servant leadership, friendship, trust, and impact. So it's a big deal on our team to get your senior stylist um, quatrefoil pendant. So that's something, you know, it's a nice incentive. Team leader, director, and senior director gets an Alex and Ani bracelet with the crystal of the color of the month they promoted. So these are small prizes that cost $20 or less that, um, kind of bind our team it makes us special in a way so having those little incentives help and we uh, train our leaders to take over that role so I will buy for Molly who's under me but then Molly would buy for her under vice versa you know all the way down so I'm not responsible for buying all these prizes it's something that that leader takes on and once they start taking on that responsibility something goes off in their brain and they just, um, they embrace it. So that's my first point. Is there any questions on any of that? 
Trinity, when you said when they take over, do they take over when they become a team leader? Or when they become Whenever a senior they stylist? Yeah, senior stylist. So okay. they're responsible for the people they recruit, their prizes. Gotcha. But we do let them know if, if they have a financial hardship or let us know and we'll, we'll take care of that for them. So no one's burdened. Uh, and the incentives, you know, it's what we say to do. They don't have to do it, but everyone really has caught on to this. And it's just been amazing. And when the girl wins her binder for the first time, I mean, she's posting pictures of it on Facebook. When they get their senior stylist necklace, they're excited. It's just a team culture. Um, and it's something they want to earn so they can be part of the club, which is pretty, pretty cool that we didn't anticipate happening, but it's kind of created this atmosphere of, um, you know, th earning these prizes. So Trinity, so when you say they BQ within the first 35 days, they get their binder. So if they don't, they just don't receive the binder, but the next thing that they could go for is the senior stylist. Correct. Gotcha. Yes. Connie has a question. On the quadrifoil pendant, so the four corners are your friendship, trust, servant leadership, and what was the other one? I'm sorry. Impact. Impact. Thank impact. You. Impact. Yes. We want to make an impact in our communities. Okay, I'm going to move on to point number two. Um, it's important, you know, social media is not cell media, it's social media. So you want to be really careful not to be salesy. There are so many different ways to um, share this business without selling it. And I think enthusiasm and authentic joy are huge for us. Um, so we're just really excited. So we do as many team things as possible. We're located now, I think we're in 23 states, but we do try to get together on phone calls. We try to break off into smaller groups in the states that we are localized and have, um, we had a Christmas party in December. Um, we just do a lot of things and we hashtag our team name. When people see our Facebook post, they see a club, they see girlfriends having fun. They see something that they're missing out from their nine to five. So I think it's important to share, not sell, because people have that fear of missing out. And so I think if you just share that authentic joy that Color Street does provide, you're going to have a lot of people who are missing out on that in life. I mean, it's easy to get bogged down in your day-to-day -day career or being a mom, being a wife. And um, we forget what it's like to have girlfriends cheering us on. So share as much as you can authentically what color streets doing for you not just financially but the girlfriends you're you're making um the memories the fun things um we send cards to one another we don't just wait for prizes i mean you know just thinking of you type of things um people see that and i've gotten so many messages from people saying i want to be a part of that so um share the authentic joy that this company gives you and you're going to get a lot of people who are looking for that type of uh, hole to be filled. They're going to come to your, your business just for that alone. So authentic joy. How's it changing your life? Do not be afraid to get personal. You have to get a little vulnerable. Um, when I share our financial struggles, that's not easy. But there's some woman out there tonight who's struggling. And your honesty, your authentic post might be exactly what she needs to get up the courage to message you. So don't be afraid. You don't have to share too much, but be authentic about your journey and know that um, you may have a gift that someone's praying about tonight. Don't be afraid to share it. So that's point number two, share, not sell. Oh, and celebrate every level. I'm as happy. Honestly, I have celebrated every level, every level when I hit BQ stylist to uh, we're on the verge of hitting executive this month. And I celebrate every level the same way. I mean, I'm extremely excited, but um, celebrate it authentically. Pe you don't want people to think you're climbing a ladder and you're using them to get to the top. Um, so, but celebrate every single level with complete joy. Okay, I'm gonna go, is there any questions on that? 
Okay, so I'm gonna go to number three. This is something I heard from one of my favorite speakers, uh, Leslie Zan. The pace of the leader is the pace of the pack. And this is so true. How fast are you going as a leader? Um, your team's looking at you. You're their inspiration. You're who they're gonna follow. So I like to go fast. So I train my team to go fast. Three-way calls work. There's just something about third-party validation. Um, think about being in high school and thinking about dating some boy. What did we always do? We always ask our girlfriends, what do you think about him? And it wasn't until your girlfriends gave you the thumbs up that you wanted to date him. Well, there, it's no different with this. Third-party validation seals the deal. And we recommend three-way calls. As soon as someone shows interest in your business, get off messenger, stop typing, stop texting, get them on a phone call, uh, either with your upline or if you're, you know, in a position where you can close the deal, but they cannot hear that excitement in text or messenger. So get them off typing and immediately get them on a phone call. And then before I end the phone call, I'll always say on a scale of one to 10, how close are you to saying yes to Color Street? And that gives me a good indication. If it's a one or a two, I'll say, what could I do to help you bump that number up or make you feel more comfortable about this? Or if it's an eight or a nine, when do you wanna sign up? Let's get the ball rolling. So that's kind of how I get, get them to sign. Um, out of 246 on our team, I've personally sponsored 32 and my goal is two a month uh, at least. That's the very bare minimum. I want my team to see that I'm doing what I'm telling them to do. And it's important for them to see me recruiting. If I'm recruiting, they're recruiting. We do a lot of incentives based around recruiting. Um, it's fun to sell and you'll make, a, you know, you can make some nice money selling, but you're going to make the most money and you're going to take the most advantage of this pay strategy by growing a team and changing the lives of someone else. So we strongly, strongly encourage recruiting. We do at least one live event a month. Instead of everyone having their own, uh, so you wanna join Color Street group, we have one for our entire team. And it's a private group. And um, when people have a prospect, they add them to that team group. And uh, Molly and myself, and some of the other ladies, we hop on at least once a day, um, sometimes live, sometimes just really good post. Uh, but once a month, we'll have a live event where we'll have several people come on live at different times and share their journey. Uh, we, we have two males on our team. We have two guys. So it's open for everybody. And then we usually do small incentive gifts. At the end, we have what we call a business on the go kit. And basically, it's just a coupon holder with about 20 twosies, some prep pads, and um, I print out a label that says business on the go kit. And um, if they sign up within 24 hours of the event, they get a business on the go kit. So that's been very popular. But uh, model the example you want your team to be. And you can't get frustrated with your team if they're not recruiting, if you're not recruiting. So, you know, model the leadership that you want them to show. Go fast, go furiously fast, and um, have as many events as possible that your entire team can partake in. I just think it's a better use of time than everybody having their individual Q&A pages. I think it's better if it's team run, but that's just my, our opinion, and that's what's worked for us. Since we started our team page for, uh, question and answers. September, we had about 150 people. Um, we hit 200 in October or November, something like that. Yeah, it, it's tripled ever since we started this So You Want to Be a Maniac page. It's just, we can't keep up with it. It's literally two or three people a week that are being added to the team. And I definitely think that that page has helped. Because not only can they um, view past videos, they can ask questions and other people will jump on and answer. So um, it's just a really good resource type page. 
So Trinity, can I ask you a few questions about that? Because a lot of us have our own individual pages. And then probably about, uh, maybe it was last month, somebody on our team asked, um, asked me about, could we do a team page? And I, I was contemplating it. And then Julie, could <laughs> And then I put some of my leaders on a just a message and I just kind of said, hey, what do you think about just doing it as a group? Because I, I do feel that way. I feel like, you know, if you're not adding people in there on the regular, it gets dormant. So, but if you have your whole team in there and people are trickling in, and not only that, like, do you have certain people going on daily? to go on and like either add stuff or go live or give anybody, people yeah, anybody or anybody. Can add, yeah, anybody can add anything. Um, we have a one live event a month. That way we try to, we might bump that up to two, but so far it's been good for one. Um, but as soon as someone adds someone to that page, they'll say, welcome, you know, Jane Doe to the page. Mm -hmm. She immediately gets 20 welcomes. And I just think it's not cricket. Yeah. And people need to see excitement and, and movement. And so um, I, I think like that would be huge. Plus, yeah. And plus, you know, when someone's first joining, you're telling them you need a VIP page, you need, you know, business page, you need all this. It's overwhelming, mm -hmm. but yet you want them to have success. So this way we're taking care of that for you. You just have to add them to the page and follow up with them after the event um I'll jump on the phone call with them I'll do you know whatever it takes and then once they join it's kind of a team effort we we all kind of help train people mm -hmm. but I highly recommend the group page because that way everybody is covered with the group page so and then also so you said you do a live event because my thought was oh, we have a call every Monday <laughs> night and I'm like geez maybe every third Monday we could do a live event in there instead of having you know a team meeting that would be the team meeting. But what yeah. do you do that's different on the live event opposed to all month long? Well, the live event, they get to hear from certain people, like um, the last one, my family doctor joined. So we had, you know, why would a doctor want to join Color Street? Ooh. We had one of our male stylists. Um, he's a hairdresser. Why did he join? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a mom who, her, her husband just had a kidney transplant. So how does she fit? You know, if you talk about, I don't have a lot of time, this woman really does not have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. When we say, how do you fit this into your schedule? She says, I have to, we need the money. So hearing right. from different people, um, different, you know, situations and what we were doing was going live, but now we, we have them pre recorded and we have a YouTube channel. So that way we can share the YouTube link and then afterwards they can also go to our YouTube channel and watch it again. But the live event just has a lot of enthusiasm because you have everybody from the team on at once. So a lot of people are commenting and posting and tagging people. We always get the kit out and open it up and say, this is what you get. Um, we always have a call to action, um, challenging them to listen to their heart, move with your heart, pray about this, that this is something that, you know, trust your instinct. That kind of closing always seems to help. Um, we've never had an event where we didn't sign at least 10 new people. So it's highly productive for our team to have these events. And so when, so you have the Facebook group page, do you um, like do like the, you know how like you can have an event with inside the page or do you just like people just go on live at eight o'clock and it kind of goes around? Yeah, we just, uh, we'll have really nice graphics for people mm -hmm. to share for about a week before. And then we'll have like the countdown, you know, one hour until we're live mm -hmm. and then we go live and then we'll say our next post, we're going to, we're going to hang up and we're going to come right back with a, with a post, um, comment on it. If you've seen it. Um, also we'll have a couple of giveaways throughout the night. Um, even yeah. if they don't join, we'll give away nail samples, twosies, um, things like that. We just try to keep it fun and yeah. people really like interacting with us. and. Um, like I said, I, I'm thinking about going to twice a month, but I don't want it to be so familiar that it loses the impact. So mm -hmm. I kind of like having it once a month where people, um, you know, there's just still kind of a rareness to it. Right. But, um, 
it, it always is successful. We always add at least 10 people to the group when we have these events. Yeah, I really like that. I think we should really do that. I think it would be huge, especially for the people too who are just starting and you want them to recruit, but it's kind of like, ah, like you said, it's overwhelming when you first start, but you yeah. want them to realize that recruiting is really where the, the bang for your buck, right? Definitely. So like, and, and, and to see that team culture in there where we're all supporting each other, I think would be amazing. Yeah, it helps everyone, and it, it literally takes me no more time than having a team page. So mm -hmm. it's not a, an exorbitant amount of time you're spending on it, and it, it benefits everybody. Right, right. And most yeah, people like that. that get added become team members, so it's pretty impressive. Molly was going back the other day and deleting a lot of our welcome posts because we had so many that we were losing um, some of the important stuff. So she was deleting the ones from a few months back and she was like, wow, almost everyone I deleted that we welcomed into this. So you want to be on team maniac. They're actually a member now. So it was pretty impressive to see how many people actually, I, I think it's a pretty high percentage that join. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I like that. Okay. So do you want me to move to point number four? Yes, please. Okay. So be authentic. Like I was saying before, um, don't waste people's time. Um, in my, previous direct sale life, we were told to message people, ask them, do they want to get coffee? You know, when really the whole aspect of that was to sign them up for skincare. I hated that feeling. I, I hated it. And there was just no way to not sound uh, greasy. I hated that feeling. So I said, when I was going to do Color Street, I'm going to be 100% authentic. So when I message someone, I'm straight up. I don't ask about their grandma, their dog, their how's the weather. I'm very to the point. Hey girl, I joined Color Street. I'm needing nail testers. Can you give me some feedback on this product if I send you a sample? Very upfront. And I think people respect that I don't play around. I don't, you know, him haw around. So just be very direct. Um, people appreciate honesty. Um, so that's point number four. I think that when people think you're after something and you're not quite, you know, you're beating around the bush about it, I think they lose respect for what you're doing. We have an amazing company here. This is as close to a winning lottery ticket as I will ever find. I do not have to disguise why I'm messaging you. Like I am not your friend if I don't tell you about this business. That's how important this is to me. And I think when you address people with that kind of directness, um, no different than if you did have the winning lottery number, wouldn't you want to share that with your family and friends? You wouldn't beat around the bush about it. You would say immediately, oh my gosh, I've got the winning lottery number, write it down. So why do we disrespect this business with uh, inauthentic motives? So just be honest with people, keep it short, keep it sweet. If you have a team and they're not recruiting, ask them to send you screenshots of their reach outs. See what they're doing wrong. I had a girl send me hers. She goes, no one's responding back to me. I said, well, send me a screenshot of what you're messaging people. Well, as soon as you sent it to me, I knew what the problem was. It was like five paragraphs long. Nobody reads that. In that one par that huge paragraph, she asked them if they wanted to host a party. Did they want to join? Could... Um, like three different things in this one huge message. You have to pick one. Are you messaging them to have a party? Are you messaging them about the business opportunity? Are you messaging them? Uh, you know, why are you messaging them? Pick one thing, stick with it, keep it short, keep it sweet, keep it simple, and um, let them know I'm messaging you because you're my friend and you deserve this opportunity as much as I did. That's why I'm sharing it with you. That's point number four. Keep it short and simple when reaching out to people. Don't have ulterior motives. Um, let's see. Okay, I got one last point. If there's any other questions, I'll move on to the last one. Okay, so I'm going to have to be a little honest here. When I first started, I didn't have parties for like ever. Uh, I was proud of that. Like I could be cute without having parties. And I thought that was pretty amazing that here I was, I was a hit director without one party. 
and it was, I think it was CJ Summers at convention who said, how dare you think that it's okay for you to bring in $300 a month when your team, you're wanting them to bring in 50,000, like where's the leadership in that? And that totally changed my vision. Also, when the cruise came out, I knew I was going to have to have parties, but that, what CJ said really sunk in. Parties are where it's at, people. That is where my business has completely flipped. I don't know how I got to director without parties, but now that I'm on the party train, I'm never getting off of it. Um, I try to have at least two parties a week. I'll have more if I can. Um, that is where I'm finding since August, 90% of my team has come from parties. Now, I used to look at parties as being successful as if they hit 150 or 300. And now I've learned not to do that. Parties are successful if you have interaction. Um, if you're adding 15 people from a party to your VIP page, celebrate that. that. That's a successful party. That's 15 new people you have an opportunity to develop a relationship with that could turn into a business adventure. Um, the last three or four girls that I've enrolled, I would have never known had it not been for a bad party. So never doubt the power of a party. And some parties are just not going to be great. But guess what? You're getting people that you would not have access to. Take advantage of that. Um, I always close a party with, especially if they've had good interaction. Before I close a party, I'll say, you know, you should really think about doing this. You had a great, you had great interaction from your network. This is a product they seem excited about. Before I ask anyone on your page if they want to host the next party, do you want to know any more information about Color Street? And I've had people say no, only to turn around and change their mind a week later because they'll see that their best friend ended up having a party with me. But it's a great way to close. But if you're not having parties, you're just going to, you're going to slowly grind to a halt. And that's what would have happened to me. Thank God this cruise came up because I don't think I would have tapped into the parties. I knew I had to kick my sales up uh, to win the cruise. So um, I'm trying to translate that to my team now that parties are where it's at. You need volume, you're going to find it at a party. You need recruits, you're going to find it at a party. And you're only going to get better and better with each party. Um, I like to keep mine to an hour. So I'll have them on Facebook for maybe a week from the start. And the most important tip I can give you for parties is to prep your hostess. Hostess prepping is 1000% if your party is going to succeed or not. Um, and you can kind of tell before the party starts what kind of party it's going to be just by the excitement of your host. So you definitely want to build her up, get her excited. Um, I'm just telling you, that's just from my own experience. I wish I would have jumped on the party train sooner to think that we're almost, we're so close to executive. If we don't hit it this month, we'll definitely hit it next. But to think if I would have brandished the power of the party sooner, we probably would have blown past executive by now. And it's just, you never want to look back, but man, I wish I would have known about the parties. So those are my five tips for the right ways to recruit that, that have helped me. Um, just don't give up on yourself, guys. Um, keep working really hard. We're excited. Um, if there's anything I can answer, let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions. So Trinity, there's a few. And don't you feel like there, you can always evolve? Like you said, like you were at conference and you realized the parties is where it's at. So you were on one direction, but then you switched it and went the other direction. And I think that's what people have to realize is that you can always change direction. Um, yes. so you mostly do Facebook parties or in-home parties was a question. Facebook only. I would love to do home ones, but I just haven't had anyone take me up on it, but I'm really good with the Facebook. We created a, a mock party page for our team. And I know a lot of teams do that, um, but I'm really, we're really active on that page to make sure that the posts get changed, the pictures get changed, and to let our girls know, hey, this is just a template. You don't have to follow this. Mm -hmm. This is a good rule of thumb. We borrow a lot from Kelly France, but we change it up. Um, and guys, just get your people to have parties. You will see 
the power of that. I mean, it's crazy how people, they really think that just by posting on Facebook, they're going to get to 300 and you're not, you're just not. And what a stressful way to live when you live and die by one thing and it doesn't work and you get frustrated and they let a bad day turn into a bad week, turn into a bad month and they quit. But once they learn how to do these parties, it's like a light bulb goes off and there's joy again. They see success and um, it's contagious and that helps in recruiting because people want to join something fun and something that's winning. And so um, I, I really think the power of the party has helped our team. And so I tell everyone, party it up every week, have at least one party. Yeah, I think parties are huge. Um, and, and the biggest thing is, is the hostess. Like, Definitely. hostess has to be able to do the work. And I think a lot of people were kind of saying to people like, oh yeah, just have a Facebook party. You don't have to do anything. I'll set everything up. But they have to do stuff. They have to message the people that are going into the party. They have to message them that the party is, you know, going to close the next day. Like they have to be on top of the people. And that's up to us to make sure that the hostess does all that. Because we have a ton of Facebook party templates. And the other thing is too, is like you said, um, the templates are great, but you really need to make your own graphics because then Facebook flags you. When yeah. they same graphics going on all these groups, it's a red flag to Facebook. So you really need to try to make like your, and, and that's easy enough to make your own graphic. You know what I mean? And then you can keep on using your same graphic as long as it's yours, but they don't want to see it on all these group pages. So I think that's really important as well. Yeah, we, we have a hostess brochure that I made. And so, you know, if you're a team leader, go ahead and, and take, take a couple of hours and make these things for your team. So I made it, uh, it's a PDF and it, they send it to their hostess and it's literally a brochure and it tells the hostess, this party rides on you, be active, be aware, tag people. I mean, it's basically everything to do. It took me maybe an hour to make. So they print that off as a PDF and they mail it to their hostess with the, you know, if they do the free set of nails or whatever they, they do. But I definitely think the brochure has helped because the, you know, if, if they read it, it tells them, you know, this, this depends on you. And I always tell them to keep it small, 15 people tops, mm -hmm. because I want you personally reaching out to those people. Um, it's just important. And I, and I tell them who are your 15 ride or die girls that are going to buy whatever it is that mm -hmm. you love because they trust you. Those are the girls I want at this party. I don't want your teachers, cousins, friends, babysitter. I want your, your cousins, your sisters, your college girlfriends, um, mm -hmm. your top 15. Yeah. I always you know. say the people you would invite to your home, you've got to treat the Facebook party as a home party. So true. If you treat it like a home party, then it's, it's, it's going to work. The only thing is they're not coming to your house, so you don't have to clean it. <laughs> so you don't have to clean your house, but you got to message them. Just like yeah. we have to, like we can put out as many posts as we want, but I feel like it's in the private message is where you get that person to host that party. You, know, Definitely. you have to ask. And the same like, with us asking for the party, our hostesses have to ask their guests, like, or just remind them, not really asking, but reminding them, my party is happening. This is the information. Did you see the information? <laughs> the party's closed. Yes. If that's the whole hostess coaching, you know? Definitely. And I strongly recommend that Molly Fitch video with Kelly France from last week. I took two pages worth of notes. It's totally going to change the way I do parties. So if you haven't seen that yet, definitely go to Team Nailed It. Type in Molly Fitch at the top. It'll pop up. Um, some of the best tips I've ever mm -hmm. heard. Highly recommend that. Um, once your girls see the success of a couple of parties, you don't have to convince them anymore. They're going to be having parties weekly. Mm -hmm. Here are your incentives around parties, three-way calls, um, those are business building activities that are going to increase your team volume. And I'm telling you, when, when your team starts winning and they hit their promotions, I mean, we're looking at maybe seven or eight promotions this month. That gets everyone excited. And then it's just yeah. a mentality sh uh, shift. We all want this. It's not just me running for something. Mm -hmm. It's every single one of us. We have this man mentality of recruit, train, uh, servant leadership. So all these tips are definitely what I've been doing. And um, I'm sure as I evolve, 
they'll change. But for now, these were, these are definitely things that I would highly recommend doing. Yeah, these were awesome, awesome tips. It says that we have one minute left. So just before it cuts us off, I want to thank you so much because this was a yeah. lot of information and it was a ton of information. And I want to thank you for coming on because that was, that was great. And I'm sure there's going to be more questions. So maybe if you guys reach out to me with your questions, I can maybe do a group to Trinity. That way she's not getting bombarded with so many individual questions. Would that be okay? Totally. Okay. So all your questions, just filter them to me until tomorrow night at like midnight. And then if I have any questions, Trinity, maybe I'll reach out to you on Wednesday. Sounds perfect. Awesome. This was great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate hey, it. Hey, Gloria. Hey, Molly. Some of the girls on my team. Hey, girls. I know. Thanks, guys, for hopping on. This was Thanks, awesome. Trudy. Bye, guys. Talk Bye. about the team, everyone. Bye. Thank you.